Hey everybody, and welcome back to episode 11 of the Bits and Barbells podcast. I'm Baxate. I'm Ben. And today we are going to be talking about the five attitudes to avoid in college. This is so that you can have the best possible time in college, be the most successful in college, and generally these attitudes will prevent you from doing that. Before we get into that episode, uh, if you are watching on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps us out with the algorithm. And if you're watching on any podcast platform or listening rather, please give us five stars. Um, without further ado, Ben, do you want to get us started with like the first attitude that people should avoid? in college yeah so the first attitude that attitude that you need to avoid in college is that it's the teacher's job to teach and if you don't learn somehow it's their fault that you didn't learn that's just absolutely the wrong mentality to have here you need to have some form of self accountability and keeping yourself accountable for learning the material because not all professors teach to the same caliber right some are better than others and I'm sure you know this when you're signing up for your classes, sometimes you'll see that some professors have higher ratings than others. So it's kind of the luck of the draw here when it comes to getting a good professor that can actually teach well and that students are receptive to. Because even just kind of going on, on a little bit of a tangent here, some professors may have a teaching style that doesn't exactly align with how you best learn. So in cases like that, Really, it falls squarely on your shoulders to look in the mirror and then just look at the textbook and say, I have to learn this by myself because if I don't, well, then I'm going to fail this class and then my GPA is going to be bad and then my parents are going to disown me and then whatever <laughs> happens, happens. Yeah. No, I think that um, I agree with all that and even some more comments is just relating to, okay, so if it's the teacher's job to teach clearly everybody sitting in that class is not a, a robot, right? It's not like you just sit there and assimilate the knowledge and will just automatically download it to your brain. So clearly there is an active component, even if they're a fantastic teacher, right? You have to make the connections yourself. And so to have the attitude of, oh, well, they did a bad job and that's why I didn't learn it. It's there's a, it's a two-way street, right? It's not, you can't just expect the professor to do everything for you and expand that into the real world. You aren't going to show up on a job and know exactly what you have to do. And especially in a job like we are obviously software engineers, you're going to be constantly learning. And so to expect that you are basically a passive actor in the learning aspect of this to me is just a really, really terrible attitude to have because you're going to have to go out and learn different things because what happens when you're on the job? Oh, well, he didn't teach me how to do it. That's why I'm doing a bad job. No, it's clearly your performance. Yeah, I like what you said about you can't be a passive actor, whether it's in college, on the job, or in really any circumstance, just sitting back and letting others kind of take the reins of whatever situation is happening. And then you're just sitting there and you're saying, oh, you know what? This is not my problem. It's not my responsibility to do this. I, I shouldn't have to do this, whatever. All of these attitudes are just awful because you need to do it yourself. There's always going to be a little bit of a gap there. There's always going to be a little bit of a gap where something wasn't covered. Maybe you missed a couple minutes here and there, right? So even in an ideal situation, you're sitting in class and somehow you're able to assimilate all of this knowledge perfectly and form it into a cohesive mental model where you can understand the material perfectly. Even in that case, there may be other topics that are outside of what was taught in class that you need to study by yourself. Take software engineering and computer science, for example. One of the main criticisms of the whole software engineering hiring process is that leak code isn't, it, leak code isn't what you do on the actual job. And by extension of that, leak, you don't learn how to solve leak code problems in school. Right. This is a common thing that people say and they get upset about it like, oh, man, I shouldn't have to do that because it wasn't taught in school and it's not fair. Yeah. It's like, no, you need to learn it by yourself. It doesn't matter that your teacher didn't teach it. Put that responsibility on your shoulders because it's your future, not the teacher's future. Yeah. I mean, I have a hot take around this, which is actually just the purpose of a professor in college specifically is to give you the tools that so that you can actually go out and 
not necessarily learn the entire material by yourself, but they equip you with the tools to go out and solve problems, right? And so uh, part of equipping you with the tools is giving you the necessary components so that you can put it together yourself. And so that's where I think that a lot of people misrepresent what it's supposed to be, which is they're not just passing of information to you. If that were the case, then this is where, you know, there's a whole thing about, you know, learning online or whatever. Yeah, you could go watch a YouTube video. There's a reason why college is a fundamentally different experience than just reading a textbook, for example. Exactly, right? Because it's not just the passing of information, because otherwise, why would a professor not just record a lecture once and then for 10 years play the same <laughs> exact lecture? Yeah, no, that's a great point. It's like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. The same principle applies to teaching and professors. They can lead you to the knowledge, but they can't actually make you absorb it. Yep. That's on you. That is your responsibility. Yeah. I'll, I'll add a small small caveat here, which is that there are bad teachers out there. We're not saying that there aren't, and there are truly terrible teachers <laughs> there out there. Are some well, really yeah. Bad ones. And in in some cases, um, you know, this I used this example when I brought this up on my TikTok, but um, there will be cases where yeah, fifty percent or more of a class fails an exam. That's probably more on the teacher, right? But in the case where you yourself are like, that wasn't taught in class, and then it showed up in the on the exam, if other people are able to destroy that curve and get a hundred, what are they doing that you're not? Because it's not like they have some secret code and it's not like they were listening to a different lecture than you, that you guys were both given the same amount of materials. How did they outperform you? Well, they probably did something you weren't doing and that's not them doing something that you shouldn't do. If anything, that should be like, oh, clearly I need to step it up. Not the professor needs to step it up. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, so that was number one oh, attitude. Oh, actually, go ahead. I, I just thought of something else, which is um, I, I like what you said earlier about how, sure, a professor could upload one video of their lecture that they did 10 years ago and then just have that exist in perpetuity. But really what the value proposition of college is, is it's an environment where learning has stakes because not every human, not... Everybody is not capable of sitting down and reading a textbook and then perfectly assimilating that knowledge into their brain. You, what you need is you need an environment where you're paying a lot of money to be there and there's a concrete thing at the end of it that shows how you performed, which is your GPA. That's really what college is. It's providing you the stakes to where it now forces you to actually learn the material on your own. Yeah. And more than that, it gives you the tools to learn how to learn, right? That's that's another thing that's talked about a lot. Uh, but essentially going through this process and going through these, uh, you know, basically triumphs of uh, learning on your own. Um, when you don't learn on your own, then you'll basically be able to adapt. And hopefully when you graduate, now you're ready to take on a totally different concept. Cause again, in your career, it's not like you walk into your career from college, your college degree. And it's like, I'm qualified to do everything here, but because of the ways that you learned in college, you can apply those to your next, uh, sort of adventure and be able to uh, do well. And I think that's another really big benefit from college. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. Yeah. That was uh, attitude one to avoid in college. <laughs> um, the, the next attitude that we say that you should avoid in college in order to be successful is, uh, this is a fairly common term. Uh, you might've heard this before, which is that, uh, you can retake a test. You cannot retake a party. And of course the underlying, uh, sort of signal here is that uh, you should prioritize experiences over doing well in the class because, uh, one is, you know, I guess, more valuable. Um, and I think that this attitude is pretty misguided. I think that there are definitely times where you should go to parties. And I think that you actually should prioritize that as well. Um, but it should not be at the expense of your grades and it should not be at the expense of your, uh, fundamental reason why you're going to college, which we just mentioned, is uh, ultimately for that GPA and for that piece of paper to say, hey, I can do this. Yeah, FOMO is such a huge thing when you're in college because the, because the people you're around, let's say 18 to 22 year olds, everything is driven by, oh, I need to post this on social media or how some person is going to think of me if I didn't go to this event or maybe, or maybe even just another situation where you're, 
you're hoping to meet potential friends or romantic interests at an event and you just see this wealth of opportunity of potential things that could be fruitful for your future at this event, right? That's what it really comes down to. It's like, oh, the potential. Oh man, I can't miss out on this because if I do, then I could have missed out on that one girl or I could have missed out on anything. That one crazy moment that everybody saw and then they're posting on their stories and then the next morning you wake up after you studied for 17 hours in a row for your test, you check your story really quickly before heading into exam hall and boom, there was some crazy thing that happened. Everybody's like, yo, were you there? And then you're like, nah, dude, I wasn't there. But it's okay, right? These things, they aren't, it's like, you're not gonna remember that in 10 years, right? You're, Probably you're not, not even a few months. Right? right, after the next one happens, boom, that's old news, right? All of this stuff is so temperamental, so transient in space and time. But what persists is your ability to learn and your ability to do well in your classes and then your GPA, of course, which sticks with you no matter what. You may not want to have it sticking on you, but it sure will. Yeah, I think that uh, anecdotally, I mean, this is something that I suffered with, especially being part of a fraternity. And I can tell you without a doubt that... Uh, the amount of crazy things or super fun, super <laughs> lit parties that happen that I truly like, uh, am so glad that I went to are far and few in between. The amount of times that I went out to a bar and it was the exact same night, <laughs> almost on repeat that I've done yeah. for weeks prior were way more common. And so uh, the whole, like you can't retake a party I, I, arguably you can. I mean, I think that most, uh, it, unless it's a truly once in a lifetime experience, which if it's a college party, it's not right. Um, if it's, uh, that's where I think a lot of people get messed up is they think that those, those experiences, which you just mentioned are somehow unique in nature, which, um, if you really even want to party after college, that's something you're also welcome to do. And if you're, you know, do hard, do work really hard in school and you're at a great job and you make a lot of money, then you'll actually be able to have more experiences and have more yeah. crazy lit times after college than you did during college. No, that's a great point. And something I didn't even think about, it didn't even occur to me because basically at this point, one year removed from college, I've already practically forgotten about everything because Every time I went out practically with a, you know, a couple of times where it was kind of, you know, hype or whatever. Anyways, a couple of times you do go out. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to have a great time. There's going to be some crazy wild thing happen. You and your boys are going to talk about that for, you know, months and potentially years to come. However, the bulk of that time you're going out, it's the same run of the mill thing. And then you're sitting, well, at least for me, this is the case where I'm, I'm sitting there at 2 a.m., calling my Uber and I'm like, bro, I should not have been doing this right now. I'd much rather be asleep in bed than wake up, go to the gym and do something productive. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fundamentally what this comes down to is just uh, have your priorities straight. And um, yeah, of course, like I said, you should prioritize experiences as well. Um, but it, 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 if given the choice yeah. between the two, I think that you should, uh, you know, prioritize the thing you're paying a lot of money to do, which is go to school there. Yeah. Do it in a smart way. You know, just en enjoy life, but do it smart. Yeah. Um, do you want to give us the number three attitude to avoid? Yeah. Uh, this is kind of, it relates back to what we were just saying, but I think an important point to mention the third thing that you should avoid in college the third attitude is that the grade is the most important thing and everything else doesn't matter so you need to sit in your room all day study for 19 hours and then go to bed wake up at 6 a.m and continue the cycle and just study constantly go to your classes take your exams get a hundred on everything walk out with your 4-0 perfectly manicured resume perfectly manicured transcript that doesn't have a mark on it. That's not the case. Yeah, no, I think that uh, it's important to be a well-rounded human being in virtually every aspect of life. But what people don't really understand is even in a career setting, it's very important. And the person who hyper fixated on that one axis, which is just grades, um, oftentimes this is going to be, uh, I'm someone who actually suffered from this a little bit. What you do is you get really, really good at getting the good grades. 
that may not even mean that you were good at learning the material or you were good at the underlying material itself. And so I think that when you just look at the number on the page and that's the only thing you focus on, it clouds your judgment in what's actually important. And uh, it, when you are applying to jobs as well, right? Uh, I know people who, for example, in CS or whatever, they do graduate with a 4.0 and they didn't have any internship experience or they didn't put, uh, they thought that the GPA would matter more or was the only important thing. And they're struggling to find a job because, oh, it turns out there's, there's more than just the GPA when people are factoring me in to a bunch of other people with perfect GPAs. Right. I, I think a big, uh, a big point that people like this miss oftentimes, or at least what I saw as a computer science undergrad was getting the perfect GPA, but then not doing a single project. I know you, you didn't necessarily do projects, but you maybe had a different pathway. I was, I mean, I was computer engineering. And so, right. yeah, I, I kind of stumbled into the field in a, in a yeah. sense. But I think for most computer science students specifically, or really any engineering major, you can get a perfect GPA at the expense of a lot of things that will actually make you a better and more qualified candidate. Because somebody with a bunch of theoretical knowledge doesn't necessarily perform better on the job than somebody who has maybe no theoretical knowledge, but maybe they have a ton of hands-on practical experience. Maybe they did a bunch of internships where they had a bunch of projects that they contributed to on a large scale with other engineers. That's going to look a lot better on a resume than a 4.0 where you you know got a 97 in your calculus class. Okay. I mean, it's which one does an employer care about more? A hundred percent. And and I think that uh, it's also just a measurement that we talked about this concept before, but it goes away. And so once you graduate and once you get a job, there's no such thing as a grade. I mean, you might be a, uh, graded on your performance in a sense, but it's a lot more loose and it's uh, a lot more based on impact and other things that are actually valuable versus the number in the class. And so I think that uh, thinking that there is something objective that you can measure yourself against, and that's, again, putting the sort of importance on the number itself rather than what it's supposed to represent, I think is where a lot of people get lost. Um, and then mm -hmm. the other thing about there is the, the sort of high grades at all cost. Uh, people will think, and I know this is uh, especially true for people who have a lot of pressure on them, maybe from a parent, or um, this is true with a lot of immigrant parents where they need to get the highest grade or they're a failure, right? And so what that can do is it can put a lot of pressure on you and you actually feel uh, the need to go out and do something like commit academic dishonesty or cheats to get your high grades, right? And um, obviously that's a bad idea for a number of reasons. If you get caught, you know, you could be expulsed, like literally no longer be a student. That's a far worse uh, outcome. You could get a zero mm -hmm. that would make you fail the class. That's a far worse outcome than getting a, even like a 60 or a 70 if you would have gotten it normally. Um, but in general, I think that just putting that much pressure on the grade itself can also um, lead you down the path of what I just said, which is uh, making a really, really bad decision. Yeah, this is something that I saw uh, with with friends of mine. I, I never had any academic dishonesty on my record, but I mean, we were around people who, you know, it happens, right? Let's not beat around the bush here. It, it happens, and it's pretty common, to be honest. And the way I thought about it was the, the longer I got through college, the more stakes everything had for me. So I, I approached it from the framework of if I cheat on this test, I might get, you know, 20 more points or, or whatever the number is. I, I cheat on this test, I'll do better. Okay, but if I get caught, boom, that's a zero. And not only is it a zero, then I'm on academic probation. And worst case after that, then I'm suspended for a semester and I fail the class. And then beyond that, it's like, okay, now you're expelled. And then, so it's like, is it really worth it for that little bit of an extra boost in the short term? that may not even necessarily impact the final grade in such an egregious way. I don't think so. I think the, the risk reward is not even there at all. I remember one time my freshman year, this is kind of what set me straight. So my freshman year, I, I was taking this class and it was like, um, basically the, the teacher checked the attendance, 
by like you you there was this practice problem and then you write it on a piece of paper you put your name on it and then you put it on like this pile and i like i had to miss class that day for some reason and i told my buddy who's in the class i was like yo bro like can you like hook me up right and so he hooked me up right and he he did the exactly he basically transcribed the exact he copied the exact same thing that he did on his paper and he put it on mine and then he put it in the pile and i was like yo bro did you put them in at like you know did you like mix them in the pile like so they were like separated a bit and he was like uh no i think i just put them in right on top of each other and i was like no no and so the teacher called us in and she was like yeah this is like it's pretty obvious what you're doing and obviously i don't think there was malintention here but she just kind of set us straight and she was like yeah i mean do you think it would have been worth it to get to miss that one day of attendance and risk your academic career and I was like, Poof, that set me straight like right away. And I was like, all right, I'm literally never, ever doing this again, like ever. And sometimes people would come to me and they would say, hey, Ben, you took this class, right? Can I get that homework assignment? And I would say, no, dude, like, no. And I wasn't trying to be mean. I wasn't trying to do anything. But when people act in desperation, they can be sloppy and they can make mistakes and they can leave a trail. And then all of a sudden you're now wrapped up in their problem, which is not something, not a situation you want to be in. You don't want to ever put your future in jeopardy at the cost of just helping a buddy out. Yeah. I don't think it's worth it. I think uh, we'll come back to that on uh, attitude number five. I think that's a really good point. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, you reminded me of a, a whole sort of uh, sect of people in college who mm -hmm. I remember who were so dedicated to the grade, but not even in the sense of like, these were people who would uh, do it just to pass or whatever, but they had cheating basically down to a science yeah. and they were, do they would do it all the time. They knew like all of these different tactics, these different sites and were almost like skilled in the sense of committing academic <laughs> dishonesty as opposed yeah. to just learning the material. And that's what I don't understand. They could put the effort into actually doing it, but would I mean, yeah, you basically what you just said is a uh, unsophisticated method yeah. because you're not experienced at it. But I know there were many people who I actually was familiar with who would um, commit it, academic dishonesty at virtually whatever cost <laughs> or at every opportunity for yeah. even the most mundane things. I, I mean, I was familiar with people who do this all the time where they have this entire like company, essentially, like this enterprise of cheating where they, there are so many individuals involved, there's so many moving parts, it's like literally its own company. Like, oh, we got the CEO right there, we got this guy who does, he specializes in this, we got that guy who specializes in that, and then everybody works together and they all get the grade and it's like all good. But it's like, then they walk away at the end of the semester and they learn literally nothing, and then boom, they're in trouble when they get to a job interview and the guy's like, yo, tell me about this class and this concept from that class. And you're like, ooh, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, what do you, what do you do at that point? You're just, you're just toast. Wait, you're I done. was actually supposed to learn the material. There was a purpose to that whole thing. That's crazy. Um, the, yeah, the other thing that I, I, I don't want to scare people, but um, is some more anecdotes is oh, okay, first of all, uh, professors do this for their job, and for many times have been doing it for decades. To think that they aren't smart enough to sniff out suspicious things is ridiculous give them the benefit of the doubt they're not stupid and so stupid. to think that, to think that you're going to outsmart a professor uh with some way of committing academic dishonesty they probably have seen everything that you're about to try and could even conceive of trying um the next thing is oh, wait, wait can we can we touch on that again a little bit because i i don't know i feel like we have some juicy stuff to cover in this subject yeah i, I remember one year when i was taking a final the professor had inserted moles like TAs like interlaced into the students as they were sitting in the lecture hall to take the actual exam. And so people were like, you know, you know how it is when you're in the final exam, you're like, you know, you do that and you do peaky that yeah. a little peeksy, peeksy that way, that way, try to see what's going on. And the professor had smartly kind of literally inserted TA moles into the, the students and you didn't really know, right? Because how often do you, like, they were TAs that weren't a part of the class. Essentially, they were just volunteers. I don't even know. I don't even know what was going on. But somehow, this system existed where these people were just kind of monitoring amongst the students. And they marked who they saw. And then at the end of the, like, the test, like, some people got in, like, major trouble. 
like as they were leaving they're like yo can you come here for a sec and then she's like boom you're done right you're, yeah. you're toast yeah that's what i was gonna say so two things on that um one is that for another thing that a lot of people just don't realize, um, and this is not to help people, but I've seen so many times where people don't realize that it, it's a multiple choice exam, but there's multiple versions and they oh don't tell God. you there's it's multiple the- versions. <laughs> and so you're trying to copy off the dude next to you, but you have a different question order or different questions period. And you just fail because of that. But I was going to talk about more kind of that thing was when COVID happened, I wasn't taking it this semester, but many of my fraternity brothers were, were taking a physics class and COVID happened. And so everything went online, right? Finals had to be online. The professor purposefully mm-hmm. put wrong answers on Chegg yeah. to the question on the exam. Oh, dude, I remember this. This was on Reddit. Yeah. And so anyone who submitted the, w- the work, template. Yeah. It, yeah, the work to the wrong answer was basically a self-report that you went on Chegg and tried to commit academic dishonesty and were auto auto caught. And so they yeah. basically said, hey, and then they did something like really insidious, which is the professor sent out a, a massive blurb yeah. and was basically like, Report hey, yourself. I did this thing to basically see who would be cheating. And I know who you are. I'm going to give you a chance to come forward, say that you cheated, and I'll let you retake the exam at a later date. But if you don't tell me, then basically I'm just going to give you a zero. And so that was like a almost like a squid game level threat of <laughs> catching cheating. Dude, that's like a 400 IQ move on professors. Yeah. Like professors are not dumb. Like there's a reason why they're teaching out of college. They're not they're not dumb dumbs. They they know what they're doing. So just and- to yeah, yeah. Ahead. One more point is kind of the whole COVID situation. Nowadays, we didn't even have a chat GPT and mm, yeah. and large language models back when we were in college. We had to do it via Chegg and unsophisticated caveman methods, right? Nowadays, chat GPT is like massive and you can just do whatever, enter it in. Oh, what the, you know, how do I take the derivative of whatever? <laughs> and then boom, it gives you the answer like automatically and then you're just chilling. Or even for even more sophisticated questions, even. And now they have like this whole arms race of chat GPT cheating, deciphering models. Like, oh, did you use chat GPT? There's like a 30% chance, 90% chance, whatever. And there's this whole arms race going on. And it's like, you're creating, by cheating, you're creating more work for yourself in the long run by just building this brittle foundation of knowledge that you then have to try to build upon to go future, to go build upon your education and take the later classes, right? You're building this brittle foundation, then you try to stack more stuff on top of it, and then you're toast because you have nothing there, and then it just crumbles and you're you're like done. Absolutely, yeah. The thing that I was gonna say is that uh, imagine the kid who didn't cheat on that physics exam and then got like a 70 versus the kid who cheated and got a 95. Um, and then that whole announcement comes out. Who do you think is more happy in their decision in that moment? The kid who cheated and got the 95 and now thinks he might have to retake the exam or get caught and get a zero or the kid who didn't cheat and got a 70, it's a C, but now it's like, oh, (laughs) I feel pretty good about my decision, right? Yeah. And it's not like, oh, they get to retake the exam and it's going to be the same difficulty. It's going to be, oh, you know, you cheated. I'm going to make this three times as hard. And I've heard that. I heard that's yeah, actually it, what happened. They're not going to make it easy on you. They're not going to make it that easy. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So that was the third attitude to avoid. Uh, going right into the fourth attitude to avoid in college is uh, basically that exercise isn't really the most important thing right now. And uh, I think a lot of people when they get into college will sort of put, even if they were athletes in high school, will put their health by the wayside, right? You hear about things like the freshman 15 or just the dining halls and they're eating a bunch of crap. They stop working out because, oh, well now school is the most important thing in my life, which I would argue that is, uh, but that does not mean that you should sacrifice your health by all means. I use the argument, and I said this in a previous episode, that you are at the stage of your life where you are healthy by default. And so the only thing you can do is mess it up. And so why on earth would you commit the act to actually mess it up, which is what I see so many people do in college? It really doesn't take a whole bunch of effort to maintain your physical health. Go to the gym, do 30 minutes of cardio three times a week. I mean, that's like a bare minimum, right? Just walk around campus. 
don't take birds and limes everywhere. Don't scooter like a, you know, like a lazy bum, you know, just go walk. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love seeing the guys in the scooters. They scooter around. Right. It's so funny to me because it's like, bro, you really can't just walk like five feet. Right. I did this when I was my freshman year when I was bulking like crazy. I talked about this in a previous episode, but basically I was bulking like crazy and I got it in my head somehow that I can't burn excess calories so what I would do is I would literally bird everywhere. Like <laughs> I would literally bird to the dining hall, eat and then bird back to my dorm. It was like the laziest thing ever because I thought burning calories was somehow bad for me. <laughs> it was so ridiculous, right? Just wanted to bulk and put on as much weight as possible. That's something even, I guess, aside the point. But anyways, yeah, basically it doesn't take a whole bunch of effort to just make some smart decisions and put in a concerted effort to block out some time to exercise. Yeah. And, and we've talked about this before, but it's so important to bring up that you will literally perform better if you are physically healthy in school. Like if you are not just filled with crap, haven't worked out, your cortisol is all messed up. You can barely like do any kind of strenuous activity for more than 10 minutes like this. It really has a profound impact on your br brain's ability mm -hmm. to function. And so I think that just, even if you don't do it for the reason of just for your health, do it for the reason that you'll perform better in classes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your brain is an organ and it consumes like 30% of your body's energy per day. Cause it, I mean, it's the most complex organ that is in your body. Just the, the sheer amount of things that are going on there is crazy. And I, I remember this because, you know, I wasn't in the best shape when I was bulking because I literally did zero cardio, even though I looked like I was like big or whatever. I wasn't in great shape because I didn't do cardio and my heart wasn't that healthy at the time. And I remember having just brain fog and... I just couldn't concentrate for more than like 30 minutes without just being like, Oh, I need something to just turn this off. Cause like my brain literally couldn't focus. And then after I cleared things up and I got on a significantly better diet and I started doing cardio and all these things, well now all of a sudden my brain is sharper than it ever has been. And it feels like my memory's cracked. Like I literally don't forget things ever. And I just feel like I'm operating a whole different level just because of the sheer amount of blood flow and, and health I have. My brain just receives tons of oxygen and it's so good for it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I was just going to say that, yeah, the, the stereotype of the college student being like always tired and low energy because mm, yeah. they're, it's, it's so bad because that should not be normal that should not be something you strive for you should not flex the flag the fact <laughs> that you didn't sleep last night or that you are spending extended periods of time studying and not eating and then binging and all this stuff yeah it's just almost like there's a a, a, a I, I don't know the correct term for this but people will fight to be oh, the yeah. most unhealthy and they'll flex it as like yeah well you know i pulled to, I was just functioning off caffeine and nicotine for the past two days. No food. That's a terrible attitude. Dude, I saw that. I was literally thinking that when you were talking about this, I was like, I don't understand why some people pull up to class and they're flexing how little sleep they got. Like, dude, I got like one hour sleep last night because I was studying so hard. It's like, bro, that's not a flex. You're just dumb for doing yeah. that. And you're just rotting your health away while I'm just chilling, sleeping like a boss. Yep. Have, have balance in life because guess what? Work is going to be a lot of uh, your time as well. And so putting in the effort into building that habit now, mm -hmm. you can just ride it out and then be healthy for decades. Um, if you don't have anything on that, then I guess we can move on yeah, to let's move on. attitude number five. Uh, at the attitude number five to avoid in college is ultimately just always putting others before yourself. And I know that inherently that might sound like, no, that's what I'm supposed to do, right? Not be selfish. Well, there are aspects of your life where you really truly should be selfish on, especially at a time in college, because this is where you're setting yourself up for the future. And so if every step of the way you are saying, you know what, I'm not the most important right now. I'm going to go help my friend who said they really needed me right now because they're very sad, or I'm going to give my assignment to somebody who is taking the class after me, uh, these, these can compound and all of a sudden, A, you teach yourself that 
you should put others always before yourself and B, it can have some really lasting negative effects on your actual long-term success. Yeah, I, I, I like to say that I've been a very selfish person over the last couple of years because I'm always putting my interests above the people around me. And it sounds terrible, right? When, like when I say that out loud, I'm, I'm like, wow, that sounds awful. It makes me sound like a just awful person. But no, when you're young, it is your time to be selfish. That's the entire point of being young is that you have no responsibilities really at the end of the day. Hopefully, I mean, okay, you don't have kids. You don't have a family. You don't have to support anybody, right? You're just kind of by yourself. You have your boys, you got your friends, and you're just trying to, you're on the come up, right? You need to be selfish and you need to put your own stuff ahead of anybody else's because that's the only way you can actually build a life where you can then support other people. Yeah, I think that's a great point is just that in order to become someone who can support other people, you need to first mm -hmm. prioritize yourself because yeah, to think that you're going to you know, become the super successful person by, like I said, anytime anybody asks you for anything, you do that instead of doing what you should be doing, then it's, it's unrealistic to think that's going to happen. I saw it all the time in college. And, um, another one particularly is re with like relationships. And I'm not saying that you should or should not have a significant other in college. What I am saying is that you need to still be able to prioritize yourself, your studies, your health, at, and not automatically put them and their interests above your own. Uh, I, I saw it all the time. I used the example at the beginning of this attitude, which is basically like, oh, baby, I'm like really sad. Can you just come over? And you know you have to study for an exam, but she's, you know, it's like that's, it puts you in a tough spot. <laughs> but ultimately, if you just do that over and over, then you are going to start doing worse in classes. Right. And, and it's just not And then maybe she breaks up with you. And then what? Because that's you're, a great point. Yeah. yeah. What's the, what's, then you invested all this thing and now it's like, I, I did see that all yeah, the time too. That happened. That was big. They break up and then they're like, well, now all this time, they it feels almost like it was wasted. And they're mm -hmm. like, all this stuff I should have been doing, now I have to play catch up. And what do I have to show for it? Yeah, you got nothing to show for it. Yeah. And then the other example that I wanted to bring up that you talked about earlier was uh, relating to the grades thing and the yeah. cheating. And yeah, people, it it can feel bad in the moment when someone says, bro, please, like, I really need that project because I, I don't have enough time and I know you did it and I know you got an A and nobody will care. Um, just send it over to me. I won't even copy it exactly. And you give it to them. And I saw it many times to where they don't change the variable names if it's a coding assignment. Or they it, leave your name on the assignment and they submit the code. And it gets flagged. And then you are all of a sudden sitting in an academic dishonesty office, office for someone else making a mistake and you were trying to do a good thing. And that's where, it, again, it's not that's putting someone else above the interest of your own because you're saying, I'm willing to bear the risk for somebody else's gain. In that scenario, that's what you're saying. And it's just not the route I would recommend going down. Yeah. So it's like, I felt awful when I did this a lot of times because it's like, you know that person, you're friends with them. You know what's going on in their life. Maybe they had some rocky thing going on recently. And it's like, no, I, I can't help you because that is my my standard, right? That's my standard is I'm not willing to risk this to go out of my way and help you. I, I This is kind of morbid, but I, I remember reading this story on the internet and it was like this dad pulled over on the highway to like help this duck like cross the highway and he literally got like killed by a car trying to help like a random duck or turtle or whatever that was cross the road and his kids who were in the car saw their dad die and it's just like that is the classical example of going out of your way to help people unnecessarily to the point where it's literally a risk for you you should always keep your self-interest above those around you because it's like and not excessively right i'm not saying like to actively try to hurt them or try to make them fail but no recognize that there are there's a risk to reward for every action you take and it's okay to put your foot down every once in a while when it's it's a situation that actually has stakes yeah i mean i think that uh, we can 
probably go into this honestly in a later episode, yeah. but I think what uh, you, it's it's a good thing that you mentioned that that is essentially, in my opinion, um, a man sh- is responsible for himself until he has you know a wife or a, someone to care for and kids to care for, yeah. and at that point they do become that you should put those people before yourself. But yeah. if you're not in that stage yet, then you need to get to a stage where you can become that person. And that involves not putting, you know, a, a random friend in college that you may not even talk to in five years mm-hmm. at the risk of your own education. That's just stupid. That's it's you being nice, but it's you being stupid. Yeah. And it's, this is kind of personal, but it's people always come to me and they're like, yo, Ben, you should get a dog. You should get a dog. Cause I love dogs. And I'm like, I can't get a dog because I don't want that responsibility right now. Part of my advantage in my position as in life is that I don't have a whole lot of responsibility and getting a dog. Now I'm suddenly accountable to this animal. It doesn't matter if I love it, right? I have my dog back at home that my parents have. That's, that's kind of my animal. I, I don't need a dog for myself. And I think, I'm not telling you guys, you don't, you shouldn't go get a dog, <laughs> right? I'm not saying that at all. Ben hates dogs. I actually love dogs and I'll flash a picture of my dog Wrigley on here because he's he's the best. I love you Wrigley. Anyways, but for me, it's like, no, part of the part of the value of being a single male in his early 20s is I get to focus exclusively on my career and all these things that are important to me to build up my base for my future family and getting a dog doesn't really fit into that recipe because it's going to just be a distraction in the short term. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of, uh, went a little off topic at the end there, but I think it's important to, to sort of set the metaphor for what, what you're really doing when you're putting other people before yourself in college. Um, if you don't have anything else, Ben, I, I think we can actually begin to wrap up this episode. I think, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Well, uh, those were the five attitudes to uh, avoid in college. Uh, we know okay. that many people have recently probably started the semester. And if you haven't started yet, then you're starting late. But good luck. And if you uh, leave your major down below, uh, if you watched all the way up until this point. Uh, leave your means- favorite dog breed below. Yeah, do that What's too. What's your favorite dog breed? Dog do breed that. and major. And um as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you are on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if you're on any podcast platform, make sure to give us a five-star rating. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Appreciate the love.